Hello everyone, welcome back to the Smite Comprehensive Guide to Sylvanas. This was a request by Anisu, among other ones. Uh, we're starting with Sylvanas. Now this is going to be a multi-part series eventually down the road. I'm going to talk about how I build Sylvanas first, and then I will follow up with an episode on him in the support role to talk about very specifically why I'm making certain decisions. But first, I want to talk really quickly about his abilities, because I want to clarify something, especially for those of you who might be returning to Smite after a hiatus and might not know Sylvanas' passive has changed, and that changes how you build him, at least in terms of his abilities. Now, the important thing to know here is Nature's Bounty activates whenever you hit or deploy abilities, and this is key. Because Nature's Bounty really prevents you from needing a whole lot of cooldown on Sylvanas. Because these just happen whenever you land or launch an ability. The significant part here is Verdant Growth. This is the only ability Sylvanas has that can hit minions. As a result, this is the only ability that's going to generate seeds whenever you hit minions with it. So this is the ability you level up first. You max this first. Once you have your full your full ability set, you level this up first. Not only because it's the only one that hits minions, but because it's also your for only form of wave clear, and it reduces enemy protections. And that protection reduction, because it's a flat protection reduction, means more in the early game than it does in the late game. So you build up this first, then you build up Wisps, and then you build up Nature's Grasp. As for actually building him item-wise, when I play him in the support role, I'm starting with one of two items, but there's not really a whole lot, hold on, there's not really a whole lot necessarily different between these two. Alright, so we're going to go for a fairly typical group here. Now, I'm if, if my team has a lot of auto attackers on my team, Alquang, Arachne in the jungle, maybe I've got Erlong Shen in the solo lane, maybe I've got a Kronos mid, something like that, I'm building War Flag to really help my allies out with increased attack speed. And when I build War Flag, again, this is for the attack speed, so I'm usually going into War Banner when I do Evolve this. So this is a very common start for me, at least in this meta, because a lot of people are building or playing auto-attacking characters. Then I'll usually go into Gauntlet of Thebes. Now, there's two very specific reasons for this. First off, well, yes, it is a bit of a slower start for uh, your support game. Sylvanas has the ability to restore both his and allies' mana, and health. Verdant Growth, when you throw that on the ground, creates a mana-restoring area. And then, of course, the Wisps heal people. As a result, Sylvanas can force a slower duo lane by just hanging out there, assuming he doesn't goof it and die, which can happen. It's happened to me. It will happen to you, I'm sure. And that It just happens, but assuming you don't die or your ADC doesn't die, you can just slow down the duo lane for a decent amount of time and very easily and quickly build these stacks as a result because you don't technically need to leave lane with Sylvanas, at least not for an extended period of time. So you very easily can build these stacks a little bit faster than most people just by not leaving lane or rotating to mid and not leaving mid, right? So you have a lot of opportunity there to build these stacks a little bit faster. Uh, that's one thing. The second thing is, Sylvanas is one of the very few ranged guardians. As a result, he actually tends to spend most team fights hanging around near the mid and the ADC, where most guardians are on the front lines with the jungler and the solo laner. So as a result of that, he tends to provide auras not to the front line, but to the back line. And these are the squishiest members of your team. We're talking the mid, we're talking the ADC. These are usually hunters and mages who die very quickly in most scenarios. By being back there just by nature of how Sylvanas works, again, I would like to point out that his initiation is a pull, not some kind of jump or something. Uh, by being back there with them, you can actually provide them with increased protections, which makes them a lot harder for the enemy jungler or the enemy solo laner to kill and they're, those are usually the two roles that are supposed to be going after your backline. And Gauntlet of Thieves will really help that. That's the second reason. Now, in a normal situation, my next item is Sovereignty. Most team comps are three physical, two magic. Again, I'm trying to increase my allies' protections. Now, you might be wondering, Professor, why not go Lotus Crown? It also provides 15 physical protections, but gives you MP5 and 10 more physical protections at the cost of not having the 250 health. 
Well, the reason why I usually go Sovereignty instead is because, in all honesty, I would rather have the permanent physical protection boost rather than the temporary Lotus Crown Shield of 15 protections for 5 seconds. That's not a long time, and especially when you combine Sovereignty with the Evolved Gauntlet of Thebes, you're talking a really interesting 25 physical protection boost, which is going to get most of your allies to approximately 100 physical protections without them building any protections themselves, which is really nice. It's going to really help them survive a lot of things. Again, this is what I normally do for a physical heavy composition. All right, there's a completely different conversation to be had here. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and switch these out really quick because... I don't actually build Breastplate of Valor that often anymore, not since they changed his um, passive. Anyways, so that's usually what I'll go for. If they have three magic and two physical, I'll go Lotus Crown, because at that particular point, while the increased physical protections are nice, the magic protections are just as important at that point, and Lotus Crown boosts both. So if there's a physical heavy composition, my physical protection item is Sovereignty. If it's a magic heavy composition, my physical protection item is a Lotus Crown. All right? What is most interesting is this item here, typically my fourth. If it's magic heavy, then it's my third, obviously. But this item changes based on my starter item. If I've built War Flag, then my usual pickup here is Shogun's Kusari. I'm already trying to increase my allies' attack speed. Why wouldn't I get Shogun's Kusari, right? If my starter item is Sentinel's Gift instead which is what I build if the enemy team is uh, abnormally aggressive or I just don't need the attack speed boosts for my team, then instead my magic protection item is Fae Blessed Hoops. Now I pick this up to help my allies survive longer. Again, this is more due to the motivation for choosing Sentinel's Gift. When I choose Sentinel's Gift as my starter item for Sylvanas, I'm looking to get Sentinel's Embrace late game. Again, for very similar reasons for Thebes, for Sovereignty, I'm looking to increase the squishiest members of my team's protections, the ADC, the mid. That's my goal there. So as a result of that, I would want to obviously help my allies survive even more because I build it because the enemy team comp is extremely damaging. And to help with that, the Fae Blessed Hoops drops these flowers that gives my allies a health shield. Great. Really accentuates the theme. And again, back to themes... Same thing with Warflag, like I said before. I'm increasing attack speed here. I would want to increase attack speed with Shogun's Kusari. So that's really where that goes. That's w how I decide what my usually, again, magic protections are. Warflag is Kusari. Sentinel's Gift is Fae Blast Hoops. It is at this point that my build gets a little bit in you know wild based on the team's needs. If I need anti-heal, I'm going to build Toxic Blade. Why Toxic Blade over, say... Contagion or Pestilence? Well, there are a couple of very important reasons. One of the first and the biggest is primarily that, again, Sylvanas is a more defensive support. He's more of a counter attacker. His Again, his initiation is a pull, not a jump or something. So he's not on the front lines a whole lot. As a result, anti-heal on him isn't that useful a lot of the time. It just doesn't make a huge difference because you're not in the front line long enough to really have enemies be affected by that anti-heal aura, but you're already going to be, you know, throwing your little auto-attack seeds all over the place anyways, and because you're already increasing your attack speed in a lot of cases, usually with the war flag, um, and even if you're using Sentinel's Gift, this still isn't a 30% attack speed increase, so it's still very useful, you're throwing around so many of these things, and they're AoE auto-attacks that, typically speaking, you can hit multiple enemies with a Toxic Blade proc in the first place, and with all of this attack speed that you're typically building up, even if you miss a couple of them, it really isn't going to make a big difference in the long run. So they're large, they can hit multiple enemies, and you're throwing a lot of them. Since the maximum healing reduction is up to 60% rather than the 25% of Pestilence or Contagion, I often find Toxic Blade to be much more helpful in the long term than either Pestilence or Contagion on Sylvanas at the very least. But this is what I usually go for for anti-healing. If, if somebody on the team also heals, and I don't have Toxic Blade because building both of these items is very dangerous for your personal health because you're not going to have the protections, I will go for Rod of Asclepius. Again, this is if I have, say, a Horus solo lane with a Hell mid lane or something like that. You know, an ally who has a dedicated ability that heals multiple allies, not just themselves. Rod of Asclepius can be very useful there, again, if I don't have Toxic Blade. 
if for some reason I need to reduce enemy magic protections because my whole entire team comp is magic damage for some reason, I'll go into Demonic Grip. Again, if I don't have Toxic Blade, it gives me 30% attack speed anyways, you know, still. Uh, and it reduces enemies' magic protections by a maximum of 10%. And this is the same thing as basically Toxic Blade. Toxic Blade is to Contagion and Pestilence as Demonic Grip is to Voidstone, right? Voidstone is a 10% decrease to all enemies nearby, but it's a melee aura. You're Sylvanas, you're not in the front lines that often. It's better to do it from a distance with Demonic Grip rather than try to force yourself into the unfortunate position of being a frontline Sylvanas, which doesn't work. It's not what he's really, you know, geared towards kit-wise. So a Demonic Grip tends to be better for me when I'm trying to reduce enemy magic protection. The times I've built this, I can count on one hand, but those times that it has been very impactful. Uh, if I don't need anything in particular, I'm often building Stone of Fall and or Mandicore Spike. Mandicore Spike triggers off the pull and his ult, so it's very useful in those regards. Um, other than that, you know, that's basically what I use Manticore Spike and uh, Stone of Fall for. Typically, I'm going to go for Stone of... Well, I'll put more emphasis on Stone of Fall with War Flag. I'll put more emphasis on Manticore Spike if I'm in Sentinel's Gift. A lot of the time, at least with this meta, I typically wind up going Toxic Blade, Stone of Fall. A lot of the time. Again, that really can change. You know, if I'm going Sentinel's Gift, that's Toxic Blade, Manticore Spike. Maybe I have Rod of Sleepies instead of Toxic Blade, and I'll build one of these other two. It really depends, but that's generally where I go from that. Right? That is typically how I build Sylvanas. Now, when I'm solo laying Sylvanas, I'm actually going for an animosity build that isn't too different, actually, from how I build War Flag. You know, you're going to start with Benevolence, and I actually, at this point, I'm going to address the theoretic issue of not building Sentinel's Gift, because I've mentioned in numerous other episodes how not building Sentinel's Gift can really put you behind in terms of sustain, but that isn't true for Sylvanas, because, as you probably have guessed by now, because he has a self-heal and a mana restoration, he doesn't need the Sentinel's Gift sustain. He really doesn't. War Flag and Benevolence, as low as their sustain often is, is enough to actually push him to the point where he just doesn't need the full sustain from Sentinel's Gift. So Sylvanas is one of the very few gods in the game that I don't have any issue building Benevolence or War Flag on because I don't feel like I'm losing that sustain because of his kit. But if you know I'm take if I'm taking Sylvanas into the solo lane, first thing I'm grabbing is Benevolence. Second thing I'm grabbing is Stone of Fall. Why? Well, mostly because it's better to be safe than sorry, kind of, is the short answer there. Um, because if you aren't 100% convinced what your landing opponent is going to be, Stone of Fall is a really safe bet, because that's 40 of each protection, and whenever you hit an enemy god with a basic attack, you get a false blessing, which is damage mitigation. So no matter who your opponent is, Stone of Fall is very effective. It also gives you some health and a little bit of magic power to help out with your healing and everything. It's a very nice item to build first on a solo lane Sylvanas. My next item is primarily going to depend on my landing opponent. If my landing opponent is physical, I will often build Sovereignty. Again, I'm trying to go for an Animosity build, so the health from this helps with that a little bit. So this is typically what I go for. It's also going to give me some HP 5, which is really nice. You're going to more likely be needing HP 5 more than MP 5 because solo lane, getting ganked, sustaining through. But again, because you have that MP 5 plant that you can just throw down under your tower, it's also not a big deal if you lose your mana buff as well. Fun fact about Sylvanas. But usually if I'm going to be going for physical protections, I'm going to go Sovereignty. Again, I'm assuming it would be third because I'm assuming my laning opponent in this case would be physical. Most are. And then, of course, my fourth item for my magic protections would be Shogun's Kusari, obviously. And then my next couple of items are really going to, once again, change. Uh, I usually go for Toxic Blade if, you know, they need anti-healing. If they don't need anti-healing, I'll usually go right into good old Demonic Grip. And for my last item, I will either build Manticore Spike if I feel like doing a little bit more damage, or I will go into very specifically Mail of Renewal if I don't, right? That's generally how I'm going to approach a lot of these, and even then... Uh, I'll usually go for Manticore Spike just because it offers me a little bit more health, but uh, that's usually how that goes. Again, every once in a blue moon, I'll go for Rod of Asclepius, even in the solo lane, if I'm not building Toxic Blade or if I'm not building 
demonic grip i'm going for rod of asclepius i just kind of default to demonic grip if i'm not building toxic blade because again this is going to wind up being magic damage in uh, you know for, coming from animosity so it's nice to have the demonic grip there to just kind of enhance that damage and give you 30 percent attack speed so that's my go-to if i'm if i'm not going for toxic blade that's my go-to is demonic grip but otherwise i'll usually go for manticore spike if the enemy team is abnormally damaging, I'll go for Mail of Renewal for that heal. But, again, that's really going to change based on various circumstances. It really is, depends on the team composition. But usually I'm going Manticore Spike. And that's how I go into the solo lane a lot of the times. Now for ADC, ADC is fairly interesting. Because in ADC role, I typically will build the Gilded Arrow to increase my damage output by 20 for the early game. Because that really makes a difference. Then my very next item is typically going to, in this case, I usually just build Telkine's Ring as my second item. Then go into Shogun's Kusari, because that you is really tough to beat 30% attack speed. Then build, usually at this point I'll build either Hastened Ring or Demonic Grip and then get the other one. I don't build Ring of Hecate on Sylvanas. Because he doesn't really need an increase in power a lot of the time, and he doesn't need the lifesteal either. I very rarely build it on him. I'm more likely to build Stone of Fall for some protections and a little bit more durability. Maybe I'll grab a Lotus Crown just so I have a little bit of physical protections and some magic power to help with my auto attacks. And then, of course, when I'm done with Gilded Arrow, I go into the Ornate Arrow, I believe it is, that gives you the 80 increase in your auto attack damage, and I'll basically run with that. But that's how I approach Sylvanas specifically in the ADC role. Now you'll notice I have a cloak, the cloaks here. Every once in a blue moon as a final item, I'll grab Spirit Robe or Magi's Cloak if the enemy team has a hideously large amount of crowd control. It happens very rarely, and it's and I do this across most of the builds of Sylvanas. The only exception would be ADC. But otherwise, I'm, I'm going to possibly build Spirit Robe or Magi's Cloak if the enemy crowd control is really getting out of hand. Okay, it's... It basically, that's when I'll build these, but that's why this is here. Uh, that That is very, very situational. But that is generally how I approach Sylvanas. Now, for relics, obviously I'm getting teleport relic. I'm getting the teleport relic first if I'm in the solo lane. A lot of the times, whether I'm support or I'm ADC, I'm going to be getting Cloak of Meditation or Belt of Frenzy. I really like Belt of Frenzy on Sylvanas because a lot of the time I'm already building some form of auto attack enhancement on him anyways. It's really great for helping your or ensuring your allies who need this the most, the damage dealers of mid and ADC, they're more likely to get hit by this because they're more likely to going to be closer to you. So it's also really reliable there. And even if I'm an ADC, sometimes I'll bust this out for a nice spike in damage and out-damage the enemy, because, of course, at the end of the day, Sylvanas is still a guardian, often going up against someone who is a hunter, which is a pretty tough fight to win. So I would rather have Built of Frenzy and activate this when I have a health advantage and just out-damage them rather than anything else, and it just typically does wonders for him, at least in my opinion and the way I play him. Uh, Blink is always the second relic. I don't care what role I'm playing. This is always Relic 2. Because you need this for your ult. For whether you're initiating or not, it doesn't matter. You need this as your second relic. That's the one he'll all die on. Your second relic should always be Blink. Not your first one. First off, your first four levels you don't have your ult. Second off, your ult is not really going to be that effective in the early game in the first place because you're not going to be in a position to be aggressive enough a lot of the time. Your allies can't necessarily capitalize on the damage quite yet. It really depends on how well your early game went, but if it goes south, then you don't want to be blinking into an enemy at level 10 or level 9 when you're behind and getting killed. Alright, it's better to have Belt of Frenzy to try to acquire that early game advantage that the meta is so fond of right now, and then once you start to snowball, then you get to blink ult in, in right? So it's, that's how I build relics on Sylvanas, but this is how I approach Sylvanas, generally speaking. Now, the very next episode of this is going to be Sylvanas in the support role, and then I'll probably move on to talking about someone else in support, and then come back to Sylvanas for the older roles, as I feel is important. That depends on the future, but in the meantime, thank you all very much for joining me. If you liked this, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, please ignore me, and if you have any comments, questions, concerns, ideas, suggestions, or requests, please leave them down in the comment section below, and thank you all very much for joining me, and have a great 24 hours.